So completing the square can be used for more than just solving quadratics. You can use it to find the vertex of a quadratic written in standard form. And it's basically the same as plain old solving by completing the square. You still have to get the, two, the x squared with the x's by itself and move everything else away. So this plus 7 becomes y minus 7 equals 2x squared minus 12x. Now I'm going to do something a little bit differently. I am not going to divide by 2 because I need to make it look like vertex form. What I'm going to do instead is factor out a 2. So I get y minus 7 equals 2 times x squared minus 6x. Now what I'm going to complete the square for is this x squared minus 6x. And so I have y minus 7 equals 2 times and then the completed square form of this is x squared minus 6x. And remember, I have to add something, right? And what I add is I take the 6 and I divide it by 2 and get 3. And I square that and I get 9. Now, I have to add the same quantity to both sides. So do I add 9 to this side? Hmm. Well, if I think about it, is this really a 9 or was it 2 times 9 or 18? Well, it's an 18, so I'm going to add 18 to both sides. And so then y minus 7 plus 18 is y plus 11. And this is equal to 2 times x minus 3 quantity squared. And if you remember, hey, 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 this is vertex form. And if I want to check to make sure I did this correctly, of course, you can graph this along with that to make sure that you get the same table. Because if you converted it correctly, you better get the same parabola. But remember, this doesn't answer the question because it doesn't say convert it to vertex form. It says find the vertex of. And so the vertex is going to be 3, comma, negative 11. So now that we know how to complete the square, I'm going to show you where the quadratic formula comes from. And I'm going to make two little columns here. And I'm going to make this side here the side work because I'm going to have to do some simplifying fractions and stuff that's not actually part of the deriving the formula. On this side are going to be the steps to derive the formula and over here I'm going to put any side scratch work I need to do. Alright, so I'm completing the square and so I need to do all of the steps I would for completing the square which first off is to move that c over. So I get a x squared plus bx equals negative c. And then, of course, you need to get 1x squared, because when we complete the square, we want 1x squared. So I have to divide by a. So I get x squared plus b over ax equals negative c over a. And so now is the time for the completion of the square. And if you remember the properties or the way to complete the square, you take the coefficient of the x term, which is b over a, and you divide it by 2 and you square it, and that's what you add to both sides. But we don't like fractions and fractions, so I'm going to fix what's inside the parentheses, because b over a divided by 2 is the same thing as b over a times 1 half, which gives me b over 2a, and this quantity squared is going to be b squared over 4a squared, because I square the b, the 2, and the a to simplify that. All right, so that's what I have to add to both sides. So I'm going to have x squared plus b over ax plus b squared over 4a squared equals negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. So now I need to simplify this fraction here. Okay, so I need to do a little bit more side work. So I have to add these two fractions. This fraction has a denominator of a. This fraction has a denominator of 4a squared. In order to add them, they have to have the same denominator. So I'm going to use the denominator of 4a squared. So if I have negative c over a, and I want it to equal something that's 4a squared on the denominator, it means I have to multiply the numerator by a 4 and an a. So I get negative 4ac. And I'm just rearranging it so it looks familiar to the formula. And so now I'm going to rewrite this so that I have a completed square over here. And this is completed square form, but I want to write it so it's in parentheses. So I get x plus b over 2a. 
squared equals, and then I'm going to do a little bit of rearranging. Once I add these two, I'm going to add the negative 4ac to b squared, but I'm going to write it like that, b squared minus the 4ac from that fraction being written correctly, and then over 4a squared. And so now I can start to see parts of the formula. The b over 2a, which was the line of symmetry, the b squared minus 4ac, which is the discriminant. So now I have to solve for x by square rooting both sides. So I get x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus the whole square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Now there is a rule that says we do not like fractions under the radical, so we use the quotient property to split that up. And so when I split it up over here with some side work, it's going to be b squared minus 4ac square rooted over the square root of 4a squared. And this, of course, b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant, can't be simplified, but 4a squared becomes 2a, and so then I have x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now, I have to get x by itself, so I have to subtract off the b minus 2a, so I get x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, and since my denominators are common, then I can rewrite that as negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which is our trusted quadratic formula.